Hi everyone, in this video we see how to compute the value at risk of a portfolio using Python. So, first of all, we rename our Jupyter Notebook file as, for instance, value at risk. And uh, okay, here we can import our libraries and packages we need. So, first of all, numpy as mp. Then we need the Yahoo Finance package, yfinance as yf. I already dedicated a couple videos about this uh, this library. Then from date time, we need to import date time and time delta. This is to go back in time. Time delta is to go back in time of uh, x years and to see our the window the time window we need. Okay, now here I write a comment so we calculate our portfolio periodic returns in our case it, we will compute the daily returns so first of all we have to decide which stock to choose to pick so for instance we can choose uh, four apple meta then we have microsoft and finally the sp500 spy okay we have chosen these uh, these stock names uh, then we have to set the investment weights of our portfolio so weights for instance we consider an equally weighted portfolio so 0 0.25 each we create an array not in this way so mp dot array and here we put our array so dot 25 and we copy and paste it since we need it okay so we have an equally weighted portfolio of these four stocks so then we have the initial investment which is initial amount so for instance one million dollars one million usd then we have to choose the time window of uh, of retrieving of downloading our data from Yahoo Finance so the end date uh, we choose as today so date time dot today then we have we choose the number of years for instance we choose three years and then we we get we obtain the start date starting from the end date so starting from today we go back three years in time so minus time delta of days equal to number of years times 365 the number of days in a year i'm i'm going pretty straightforward here because this is not the the main part of our video then we can actually download our data so stock data from yahoo finance we use the function download and we have three inputs so the tickers which are our stock names then we have the start which is our start date and finally end which is our end date and that's it so now from this uh, from this data frame we we pick the column related to the adjusted closure price so we create this stock prices variable and from stock data we pick the adjust close price and uh, yeah and uh, finally okay for instance we can see if that's all correct from here so we print the detail okay we see the last five days of uh, our stock uh, portfolio okay now we can compute the returns the daily returns as i said so from the stock prices we, we use the percentage change function and finally we can print these returns again the last five elements and you can see we have all the returns of three years of data and uh, okay now we can go on and we uh, we just need to create our covariance matrix so covariance matrix and to you to do this we have a really useful function that does all the job for us so from returns 
dot code and then we can print it and as you can see we have the 4x4 four four covariance matrix which tells us how the the movement of these dogs are related to each other and uh, okay now of course we need to compute the portfolio mean and the standard deviation okay first we compute the average returns so we just need to use the mean function returns dot mean then we these are four uh, four columns one for each stock and then we have to compute the portfolio mean so portfolio mean is equal to average returns average returns uh, dot dot of weight so we have the scalar products between the our returns and our vector of weights it's as you can see as what we done before it's equally weighted portfolio okay now we have our portfolio mean and now we can compute the portfolio standard deviation again we have the um, a useful uh, function so mp dot square root of weights dot t dot scalar product of the covariance matrix okay again scalar product with our weights let's see if it's all correct okay it doesn't seem not okay just a typo uh, here okay uh, now we can compute the mean of our investment so we call it mean of investment which is one plus the portfolio mean times uh, of course uh, the initial amount so initial uh, I call it initial investment and finally the standard deviation of all the investment which will be again the portfolio standard deviation times our initial investment okay we can print it and we can move on so this is the standard deviation of our whole investment considering the initial amount of one million dollars okay now we can calculate the inverse of the normal cumulative distribution function which is the ppf function which is already implemented but before we need to import the norm function but we see how to do it and then we have to choose the, um, the specified confidence interval for the for the value at risk so now we choose the confidence uh, inter confidence uh, level for instance uh, five percent so we, we will compute the 95 percent uh, value at risk okay now from scipy dot stats we can import our norm, norm function which I just described and then we can compute the cutoff <coughs> which is norm dot ppf which is the inverse cumulative uh, distribution function of the Gaussian distribution then we have our confidence level then we have the mean of our investment and finally the standard deviation of the investment and uh, okay this is uh, again a type I'm sorry okay it seems correct and now we can estimate the VAR which is the the main goal of our uh, our video our tutorial so the VAR we create a new variable which is the var one day so just to start we will compute the one day var which is the initial investment mm, I'm sorry for this okay here we are the one day var which is the initial investment minus of course the cutoff and we can print it 
okay so we have thirty two thousand dollars and uh, what does this say this says that since we've chosen a five percent confidence level we are saying that with 95 percent confident that our portfolio of the initial amount of one million dollars will not exceed losses greater than thirty two thousand dollars over a one day period now if you won't compute the the maximum losses in n days period we can just uh, it's a very simple because we just need to multiply the, our one day value at risk by the square root of the n days period but let's see so we can we can also print that result in a in a plot so that we can visualize better okay we can create the var array to to initialize it then we can choose the number of days which for instance we choose 15 days and then we we say for x in range of 1 and the number of days plus 1 we can here we are we can um, compute the the var of over x days so we um, we append it the the result to the var array so append of mp dot round of var one day times the square root so mp dot sqrt of x and then two we we round by two decimal digits okay and now we have uh, our var array we can print it for instance okay we can print it all and we can see this is the the distribution of one day var two days var up to 15 days var but uh, to to see the the evolution in 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 number of days we can plot it so here we just need to import uh, from uh, from matplotlib, so matplotlib, the the pyplot as a plt as usual, and then we say we set the title as var over fifteen day period, and then we can print it. So plt dot plot of var array and okay you can see it as expected it has uh, an evolution of square root and uh, okay finally we we just need to check if the distributions of our portfolio daily returns are can be considered as normal distributions to do this, uh, we can uh, perform some statistical tests, for instance, the Shapiro test, but this is not the goal of our video, so we just we can just print and plot our portfolio daily returns and visualize and check visually if it can be considered a Gaussian distribution or not. So to do this, we have our portfolio daily returns and we with the hist function, we plot uh, for instance, a hundred bins, and this will plot all the four uh, stocks. And as you can see, it seems that it, it can be a good approximation to have uh, to have considered a uh, Gaussian distributions of daily returns. But as I said before, this is not uh, good practice to just do it visually, but it's best to perform, a, for instance, a Shapiro test. But the goal of our, our video, our tutorial, was to compute this value, which represents the, the greater loss with a 95% of probability that, we'll, that our portfolio will have in a one-day time window. And then we, we, we updated our result with uh, more days with a higher number of days period to to check the evolution but as uh, 
as we expect from the formula it's just a uh, square root evolution and here we have our our plot and uh, that's the the final part of the video so thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and see you in the next video